The person that I love most in this world is no longer masking. Not masking is wild behavior to me. It's just beyond words. It's like transhumanistic shit. It's an immunocompromised person with asthma who's disabled and trans. That, that's a lot that you're going on. You look like a bird. And that somehow doesn't manage to compel you to wear a mask. Then don't bother claiming that you're anti-racist. All whose actions say, I don't care if you live or die, but you be happy that I have a new boyfriend. Imagine going on a date with one of these people. So we've come to the section of reacting to woke TikToks and a bit of a change this week because we're going to look at COVID themed woke TikToks and all of these were recorded in the last few months of 2023 or 2024. So just bear that in mind how far we are from the pandemic and what these people still believe in. A few weeks ago, I found out that the person that I love most in this world is no longer masking. Their entire family, including four small children, have stopped masking. And yesterday I texted her and I said, hey, I I can't get past the fact that you all are no longer masking. Like with everything that's happening in the world right now, with COVID, with RSV, with measles, with everything that's coming back, not masking is wild behavior to me. Masking is not a term used in the UK. And the whole mask culture and that it being associated with the left is also not a thing in the UK. No one talks about masks here. Nobody. The only people I see wear masks are Chinese people and people who are quite old, you know, working in a store, which is fine. You know, do you? If I see anyone else out of that, I'm like, that's weird. But, you know, immunocompromised. It is very rare you see anyone wearing masks. And we do not use the term masking. I just think that's cringe. Also, measles. Is there any evidence that masks stop the spread of that? I need to know that the people in my life care about their health and the health of the people around them, to which I received a three and a half page dissertation justifying their behavior. Yeah, no shit. I've learned that with these kind of people, less is more. I've learned this the hard way from people approaching me about my channel and judging me, saying I'm isms and phobics. I've learned that when I give them the time of day and type back a big paragraph or send them a big voice note, that just gives them more fire to attack me and they can sense insecurity, right? They can sense that I want them to understand me and that I am quote unquote desperate to be heard and that I, deep down, I don't want to be considered as a hateful person by anyone. Moving forward, I, I made a TikTok video called Challenging Your Assumptions About Me. And I decided that anyone who comes to me and decides to go off, I can say, watch this. Thank you very much. Good day to you. And I don't care. Um, and, you know, watch some of my longer videos. Maybe you'll see that there's a lot more to it. And that I'm pretty moderate overall. But this person, it's the honest self-centeredness of all of it. Just because you believe something does not mean everyone else has to believe that. Including classics such as we're not breaking any rules. Which they're not. We're doing way better than everyone else around us. We don't go anywhere if we feel sick. My personal favorite was um, paraphrased, you couldn't possibly understand because you don't have kids. They're not breaking any rules. You don't have kids, which is why you have the time of your life to come on TikTok and talk about something that was relevant a long time ago. Children are not at risk, pretty much virtually no risk from getting COVID. They have a higher risk of health complications from taking the vaccine, an exponentially higher health risk from being taken out of schools for a year, year and a half, stunting their mental development. And this is why during COVID, people's brains were so dead, because while this while COVID was going on, I was not pro all of this stuff. At the beginning, I understood it, but then I got very sick of it. And I tried to speak to people who were very COVID scared, saying, what about the long term effects of keeping people at home and not letting kids go to school. Poor mental health, substance abuse, alcoholism, falling behind on learning and development. And everyone just sort of brushed that off because it wasn't relevant. And this is, it shows the human incapability of understanding long-term consequences. We're all about short-term gain. And when you can get your mind into thinking of, you know, how will this affect me tomorrow, you can understand the, the bigger picture and you can get more perspective. This person is just... I just don't understand how anyone can listen to this and take it seriously. It's illogical to expect children to continue masking and 
stay in lockdown. It is. So I responded and I said, you know, as I already stated, it's your choice to make. It I'm is. sure you will do everything you can to keep your family safe. The best thing for me right now is to take a step away from this relationship. Good. I love you all, but I have to take care of myself first and foremost. I hope you understand. Why is narcissism so correlated with left ideology? It's this moral high ground they take of you need to make your decisions based off everyone else. You always have to put everyone else around you before you. But then at the same time, all they can think of is themselves. I have to look after myself. Does this person even have, are they even immunocompromised? If you want a reason to not participate in society and not do anything, be lazy, then just be lazy. You don't have to blame masking on it. It's just never enough for them. It always has to be, you're not doing enough for me, 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 and wider society. And unless a disease is a lot more lethal, then if you have an issue with getting COVID, then that's a you issue. Like stay at home, find a work from home job, isolate yourself, become a loser, like stop living. Entrenched in left ideology is apathy and laziness because everyone wants the government to do everything for them. People are scared of ambition, responsibility, achievement. I kid you not, when you prioritize those things, your life gets so much better because you feel like you have control over your future. But these people are miserable because the less you feel in control of your environment and your prospects, the more depressed and hopeless you will become. Like that is just fact. She has convinced herself that she's in the situation where in actual fact, there is so much she could be doing with her life. You said you can't have them in your lives anymore. They are very lucky you made that decision and they probably won't regret it because you are a head wreck with the hair of a dog head wreck. And she says, sure, I can't force you to stay. Yeah, that's what I would say. With me to the Eras Tour in LA as someone who still doesn't care to be infected with COVID. Here's what's in my bag. If you want to see all the details, there's a whole video on that. But don't look at the comments. It is a cesspool of ableist garbage. Anyway, I decided that if I was going to go at all, I was not only going to... Maybe there's something to be said for when you make a video and 95% of the comments are ridiculing you, disagreeing with you, saying you're fucking nuts. Maybe that's a sign that you're fucking nuts, actually. This person is getting ready for a Taylor Swift concert, which is also weirdly correlated with the left. But anyway... Taylor Swift concert and has put together a little kit for COVID. So this is full of masks, nasal sprays, chewing gum. And then there's a sign saying free masks, just in case anyone wants to get in on that, which I'm sure no one will. You want to be a savior. That's all about it. Oh, I'm such a savior. I'm going to protect everyone. Getting ready for a concert. Like you just ruin everything. It destroys the fun. Why is wokeness so anti-fun. And sometimes taking a risk is fun. I would argue going to a concert without a mask is not a risk. There are more risky things you could do. It's just being so fearful of everything. You know, you might as well put a bubble around you and be one of those people who is allergic to every single thing and has to live in a bubble. I don't know if those people exist, but I swear there are, you know, TV shows or stories about those kind of people keep myself safe but give others the option to keep themselves safe as well so i brought a bunch of extra masks spoilers no one took me up on it but i was moving pretty quickly of course no one took you up on it because you're a fucking loser <laughs> through crowds because you know i didn't want to spend a lot of time in crowded spaces that said in the past when i have made the offer people take them it is what it is as a fellow sagittarius we're doing an homage to the archer with the necklaces and as you can see i nailed it on the location of the heart it doesn't interfere with my mask at all it's just beyond words it's like transhumanistic shit like i said the apathy people that wanted excuses in life to not try to stay at home, to hide from the world. They are all desperately missing COVID. They're like, bring it back. I want a reason to, you know, not feel guilty. <laughs> when you choose to go out in public and go indoors without a KN95 or an N95 mask, you are making the choice for other people's bodies. So even with COVID, you can't escape the trans shit because all of you know who this bitch is. It's between her, possibly her and Jeffrey Marsh that are the worst LGBT TikTokers, the most intolerable. One thing I'll add is that this K95 and N whatever she said, why are they making masks sound like models of guns? Do we need to know the name of the masks? Like, is it not enough to say, here's the mask, I'm wearing the mask? They have to have individual names? As an immunocompromised person with asthma, who's disabled and trans, I not only am a more high risk to get sick, but then when I do get sick, I have less of a chance of even getting treated. And that was shown today. I went to a new doctor's office. To you are not special, girl obsessed chronically online nobody cares honestly nobody cares first of all asthma i have asthma 
And I do have an autoimmune disease called ulcerative colitis, but you know, I don't use it as an excuse to force other people to do things around me. I, I look after that myself. It's, it's a me problem, right? She is saying, cause she has asthma that she's immunocompromised. Everything's so exaggerated, disabled. Can you talk a bit more about that? Can we talk a bit more about that? You know, what is your disability? I've heard her say loads of times she's disabled, but she's never talked about what it is. And on top of that, she's loading her body with testosterone because she's non-binary. So that's your decision, girl, to take testosterone. And if that comes with disadvantages, I highly suspect it does not in terms of getting medical attention, but you like to think it is because you are obsessed with being oppressed, then it is still your choice to take testosterone and possibly have very high chance of health risks as you grow older. This is like the non-binary stuff and taking hormones and top surgery. It's just so sad because it is a full-on fucking trend. Try to be established as a patient. They said that maybe if I want my doctor to wear a mask around me, then maybe I I shouldn't actually be a patient with them. Yeah, because all these people are so sick of you. The same with the other girl. Oh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't be friends. And that's what I'm going to, you know, if anyone is like, oh, I don't know if I want you around me anymore because of what you talk about. Okay, like... I'm happy to grant you that. <laughs> God, right. A doctor turned you away because they're like, I don't I don't have time for this. I don't have time for you. It's amazing. People on the internet give you so much time, but it's because they hate watch you. There was an immunocompromised person who was put on a psych hold in the emergency room and refused pain meds for a migraine because they were asking their doctors and the nurse practitioners to wear masks in their room. Because that, That's a lot that you have going on. So in a psych ward, immunocompromised refused pain meds for having a migraine like you have a lot of stuff going on if this is true and perhaps but at the same time she's just always on tiktok and she's always wearing like you know not to my taste but she has this style going on so obviously she has enough mental stability to like get herself up in the morning and get dressed and everything she shouldn't be on tiktok if she's struggling with this much stuff she should be focusing on you know herself sorting that out but no it's easier to blame it on everyone on tiktok for her for her issues because they're immunocompromised they were told that they were being hysterical and over dramatic. We can't help the fact that we're high risk. You can help the fact that you're spreading diseases. COVID is not over. It's not like minimal either. This is major. We have people who are high risk who have been isolated for years because people just want to get back to normal. My normal is now not being able to go to the doctor because my doctor won't wear a mask. Your normal is just you want to be so oppressed that eventually you are just going to be a little speck and someone is going to trot on you, you know? Because you don't have any self-respect. Like, go and live your life. Is it is it so impossible to just enjoy a bit of your life and realize that just because you have asthma that you're probably fine and, you know, you're still in your 20s or whatever, like, you're going to be fine. And it just must be, to have compassion for her, it must be so miserable to live in this girl's brain and have doctors telling you that you're, you're being hysterical. Like, that is so embarrassing. I really hope people like this can see the light one day and say, oh my God, I can't believe I was so brainwashed. Your comfort is not more important than disabled people being able to live. But that's not the choice, is it? Just because I go to the the cinema or the, the supermarket, that does not stop disabled people from living. If you want to stay home and become an incel, then go for it. But the rest of us, life is too short. You know, we have a limited time on this earth. Hey guys, it's Tanya. How are you? It is a Sunday afternoon and I wanted to show off my KN95 mask. because I needed to know the name again. This is the kind of mask it very loosely, elastically goes around the ears. It is a nice fit. If you can see here, it gives me plenty of room to breathe. It's not too tight on my nose. It's not tight. Again, K95 mask. So we've got to the point now where masks are not just utilitarian, but they actually feel the need to come on and review the mask and talk about its design. You look like a bird. This mask looks like a beak on you. So no, we don't need to understand why the aesthetic is great. Like you look ridiculous. You have nearly every inch of your face covered. You have a mask glasses which are fogging up you have massive pink headphones and you have a a bright orange cap the only thing we can see are your eyebrows and she's like oh it's a sunday like nobody cares what day it is nobody cares 
You look like a bird. On my mouth, you can see it comes out. Like a bee. A nice color, black. It comes in other colors. You can see. It's a nice color, black. It looks so average. This is an average mask. At least if it had a cheetah design or some cool print, like I could get on board with that. But this is completely average. Here, you can hear me very clearly. I'm walking outside to try to get some fresh air and exercise. And... You should be doing more of that. You should just be doing the fresh air and exercise and ditching all of this extra shit. It's keeping me safe. And there's nothing hard about wearing this. It's nothing uncomfortable. It fits nicely. It's actually uncomfortable for us to look at you. That would be a good point. I just can't see anything but a bird just like squawk in this video. It's just so grating. My 83-year-old dad wears this. Anybody can wear this. So this is just a reminder that if you're... Yeah, it's not hard to put a mask on your face. I think anyone can wear it. Lucky enough. And if you get the privilege, you'll get to grow into old age and be healthy. Not all of us. I mean, that's the only interesting thing she said is it's true. You know, you can say, oh, no, I'm... I'm old now, you know, I just turned 30. It's like, oh no, but it's a privilege to, to turn every age because the alternative is that you're dead. Be kind to people. High risk people have every right to be in society as much as anybody else. We have a right to go to the doctor safely. We have a right to do essential service. No one's stopping you. Like you're a high risk person, go to the doctor, wear your mask, get your vaccine. No one's... Literally no one's stopping you. And there's always been high risk individuals pre-COVID. You know, the flu comes around every year. The flu is basically the same as COVID. We've had that every year. There are people with COPD, other issues with their lungs, like the list goes on and they get the flu and they die. It's like how so many old people die. They get the flu. Is safely wearing a mask is not a big deal at all. Have some love in your heart. Have some compassion because one day it can be you. Don't be ableist. Don't be eugenist. Please be kind. Eugenist, says the bird. Have a heart. Show some love. Wear a mask. All right. Again, can't escape. It doesn't matter where you go. You can't escape the trans. If you're a cisgender person who is able to look at this and this. I'm not even going to. I didn't see what that was, but it's already ridiculous. And it still doesn't compel you to wear a mask in public spaces. Seriously, don't even bother calling yourself an ally to trans okay. people. And if you're a white person who is able to look at this and this, and that somehow doesn't manage to compel you to wear a mask, then don't bother claiming that you're anti-racist. And definitely don't claim that you give a damn about disability justice if you're an able-bodied person who won't wear a mask to prevent spreading disease to disabled, immunocompromised, and chronically- Able justice person. Like, what kind of phrase is that? And uh, so I'm not claiming to be a trans ally in this way. If that's what a trans ally means, wearing a mask, then I guess I'm not. And I'm also definitely not an anti-racist because I just believe in equality and I, I'm not racist. But I don't have to believe in anti-racism to not be racist. Anti-racism is just, oh, I believe in critical race theory. I'm so sorry about this sun and the lighting. I don't usually record during the day. So this is just like really annoying. Maybe I can just sink. Okay, no, that's worse. So yeah, I'm sorry. If you're listening, you're lucky because the sun is blinding me. The ill members of your community. Y'all have two options at this point. Either get your shit together and show solidarity with members of your community who are most impacted by COVID by wearing a fucking mask, or just admit that you don't care about these people and move the fuck on. No, the, the thing is, most of us have our own shit going on. We have our own lives, and we want to enjoy our lives and not obsess over COVID. Have you noticed how trans men, I mean, they're so passable. Like, look, this is a better beard than I could grow. I can do the mustache, but I can't. My cheeks are hopeless. But with trans men, they either have kind of normal male voices or they have this, they have this like squeaky male voice that's kind of like that. Don't know how else to describe it, but they either have the squeak or they have the norm. It's just an observation there. This person's name is Desert Queer. But don't waste their time lying to them about caring about them if you don't care if you spread disease to them. That's okay. Well, I guess with my list, um, tell, tell trans people I care about them. Okay, well, I guess I can take that off my list. So much time freed up today. One of the hardest things about being medically vulnerable 
in the pandemic is the constant expectation that you be happy for everyone you know who's partaking in activities that put your life in danger, that spread COVID. Where are these talking points from? Like, again, this is just not something that happens in the UK. We are so much more concerned with other things. But who puts this expectation on immunocompromised people that you need to be happy for the rest of people living their lives? Like, who says that? That you know, contribute to that undertone of eugenics we have going on right now, where only the elderly and the already unwell are dying. It's really hard to have to be happy over and over and over again for people whose actions say, I don't care if you live or die, but you be happy that I have a new boyfriend. She looks like she's on coke and, you know, she is. She probably is on coke. The crazy in her eyes. I just feel so sorry for these people because it is just so miserable to be in this headspace. And it's funny to watch, but it's crazy. You would think all of these people are just parodies, like not real people. They're not real. You know, there is so much going on in people's lives that... They just don't have enough time in the day to be thinking about all this shit and thinking about you. Why is this narrative just feeding people to be so self-centered and narcissistic? You know, you're just gross. Imagine going on a date with one of these people and thinking, oh my god, how can I get out of here? That's it for today, everyone. Done with the COVID TikToks. I'm glad we got through that.